Hello, my name's Paul Milner and I play principal bass trombone in the London Symphony Orchestra. Uh, this is my second video masterclass for the YouTube Symphony Orchestra and I'd first like to say a big thank you for all those viewers of my last video. Um, it was great to see so many, so many people had, had, had taken a hit on that. Um, I'd like to also express my gratitude for all the nice remarks that people made. It was great and it's, it's really kind of uh, uh, rewarding for me to know that I've hopefully helped people and inspired people to maybe pick the bass trombone up and uh, do a bit more practice. So, good, great. Um, there, was, there was also uh, one reference to my hand actions that, uh, that someone had commented on. So, I've been thinking about this and maybe I should try and keep my hands still or maybe I should talk a little bit more like that and we shall see, see what happens in the video. Um, there was a few derogatory comments and obviously that's going to happen but you've got to try and remember what this is all about, the essence and the spirit of the YouTube Symphony Orchestra and um, what we're there for is just to try and provide a little bit of help into how you would approach a any edition around the world but also um, the edition for the YouTube Symphony Orchestra. Um, what I say is not gospel, it is what I have uh, drawn on 20 odd years of British orchestral experience, uh, 14 years of that in an opera job, and I'm into my fourth year with the London Symphony Orchestra. So th that's all I can comment on. If I say to do it this way, that's my view, it's not the right way, necessarily. Um, although it should be the right way for this kind of thing. If you're going to do a video and enter for the YouTube Symphony Orchestra, well, you've got to kind of do it my way because I'm the judge. So, <laughs> Um, the, the other thing that you've got to remember is that I play for a British orchestra. Um, if you were to listen to a bass trombonist playing the excerpts from a Russian orchestra, a French orchestra, um, American orchestra, German orchestra, you name it, whichever different orchestra it is, we all have our own different international styles of playing. So you might not think that the British way of playing is right, but you know that, that's the way it goes. So the first piece that I'm going to play is The Valkyrie by Wagner. Um, the difficulty with this is the, the, the dotted rhythm on, on the first beat of each bar. Um, there are different ways of thinking about this, but the main thing that you've got to not do is make it sound really triplety. Which just sounds a little bit kind of lax. It's got to have a little bit of a snap to it. Um, one way that I have been told to practice this, and, and it kind of works, although y you could practice it with a metronome to begin with, just to get the rhythm right, but then after that, um, take the metronome away so that you can actually get a sense of feeling within the music, is to actually take it into kind of duple time. So if I, if I was to do that, yeah. <laughs> and so on but that makes it really kind of uh, 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 and it's not meant to sound like that um, but that's a good way to make sure that we get the the, um, the, the triplet rhythm correct um, also the pickup as well has got to be a triplet quaver not one, two, three not like that but one, two, three Okay, um, there's, th there's, there's two different versions of this. There's the main minor version and there's the major version. Um, I do have a recording, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna, not gonna name any names, but I have a, a, a version of this where it's, it's quite kind of um, in your face that someone plays the minor version when the major version is meant to be played. And it sounds uh, pretty horrible, as you can imagine. So make sure that you know which version you're playing, the minor or the major. I shall play both of them to you. So I'm not going to play the first excerpt, which is the minor version of uh, De Valkyrie. So that was the first version. Um, it was quite um, in fact, quite a decent speed. The second version, which is the major version, which is actually when the tuba joins in, can quite often be a lot heavier. We've got to give it a lot heavier feel to it, although not taking it too slow because it can get really, really wallowy. Uh, also, the, the minor version, which is the first version, is uh, only 40 
and the second version is fortissimo. So we can try and make that difference. If you're doing that in an addition, try and make the difference between the forte and the fortissimo. Hopefully you'll be able to hear about that on the actual video. Um, the other thing as well is the short notes. Um, you probably heard, or certainly here in the next version, hopefully, that um, the, the short note, I'm really, really cracking that out. Um, again, uh, thinking back to recordings that I've heard and performances on the radio and in live concerts that I've heard, quite often what you actually hear is... <laughs> So you don't actually hear that small note at all. So what I try and do from the back of the orchestra and also for the addition uh, process is I try and really crack out the small note. Which here sounds just totally over the top. But for the audience, it sounds, you know, just, just correct. So many times you hear the trombones going on and all you can hear is the third trumpet actually picking out that little short note just because of the timbre of the instrument. So just make sure that you do that. So I shall now play the major version. Okay, so the next piece I'd like to talk about is the Schumann. Um, Schumann's Third Symphony, the fourth movement. Now, a problem with this is the fact, and, and so many kind of quiet things that we have to play, is that we've had to sit on stage, like in the Schumann, for three movements, doing nothing, just looking at the audience and enjoying the wonderful performance, um, which is great with the LSO, of course. Um, and then you have to come in, and it's really quiet, and the pressure's on. That's really, really quite difficult to do. So try and practice just kind of... Um, doing nothing, watching the television, not playing, not blowing, and then just picking it up and seeing if you can really nail it. It's, it's quite difficult to do that. Um, another thing as well is I remember back to my LSO audition uh, for, for the job that I've got now. Uh, we did the first round in the morning and I got through that successfully. And then the second round, um, the first piece I had to play was Tannhauser Overture, which is kind of quite, um, quite loud and long. Um, I got halfway through that and Dudley, my principal trombone, his phone went off. So I had to stop and start again. So I played it all the way through again, um, which I thought, oh, good, I've got through that. Um, and then Patrick stood up and he wanted me to play it a different way. So I had to play it two and a half times, which in an addition situation, when you're having to um, play at full throttle, um, is, is quite difficult. They then asked me to do Schumann 3, this next excerpt that I'm about to do. So it's, it's quite also quite difficult, not having just sat there for three movements doing nothing, but it's also quite difficult in an addition situation to play it after you've just played something really long and really loud. So again, that's another way to practice uh, doing this. Um, play something really long and loud to study, or Tannhauser, that's a, that's a really good one, so that by the time you get to it, your lips are kind of hanging off you. And then try and have the control, the breath control and the lip control to play the Schumann. Thank you. 
Now, in an addition, if it's a, a quite fast tempo and there's maybe a couple of bars rest, do count them through to show that you've got a good sense of rhythm. But in, uh, in the Schumann, it's, it's kind of three and a half, four bars of quite a slow thingy. So instead of, uh, you know, playing the last note and then just going two, four, one, two, and everybody looking at the watch and wondering what's going on, just kind of give it maybe a bar, just set the scene, compose yourself and carry on again. I don't mind that. Okay, so this is the second the second accent now. Okay, so the third excerpt is uh, La Gaza Ladra, Thieving Magpie, uh, from Rossini. Um, this has got to be really quite kind of um, light and skippy. It was written, um, uh, composed by Rossini, for one trombone in the opera. So you can imagine what the forces were like. It doesn't need to be really heavy. It doesn't need to be kind of full, you know, full force. There are several different versions of this. Um, some with three trombones in it, and it gets really kind of monotonous and ploddy. Um, so just try and keep it light. What I'll be looking for is a kind of a cleanliness of the slide, a really exact slide action. Obviously, good tuning. Um, the F sharp at the beginning uh, in Rossini's original score, it's actually um, marked as a D. Bum 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 bum. It's a D. I think probably the trombonist that Rossini was writing for when he was writing this maybe couldn't play an F sharp, and also the G because there's some versions that play the G above that as well. Um, you will come across some versions with a D in it, but don't do that. Always play the F sharp. Um, play the, the, the first arpeggio, the G major arpeggio, down the octave, and then skip up to the F sharp. Um, so one of, the, one of the performance runs that I did with Upper North, the conductor took the overture at such a lick, um, and it was, it was kind of coming to the, the bit that I was going to be coming in, and you play a few little bits, and I was thinking, I'm not going to manage this, this is so fast. Um, it was quite a shock, but it certainly did my slide technique a lot of good. Uh, I won't play it that fast uh, today. So um, I think that's really all I want to say about it. So let's, uh, let's play it. So it's uh, La Gaza Ladra, the, the first excerpt. Now, although um, that is the only excerpt that has been called for for your uh, YouTube edition, another little bit that you might be asked to do is at the end of the overture, it's uh, in the Puy Mosso. Uh, I certainly kind of find it quite difficult. Sometimes it's in the version that you might be playing and sometimes it's not. It's good to c try and hunt it down and uh, I shall play it for you so that you can, you can recognise it. It's a good one to have under your belt because, again, it goes at a fair lick. So I'll just play that for you now. So, thank you for watching again, and um, I look forward to hearing some of your videos and some of your comments, as long as they're nice, of course. I don't want to hear any of the bad ones. Um, and good luck, uh, happy practicing, and hopefully you'll get to the final in Sydney. Thank you. <laughs>